Hi, so Cubase Quick Controls allow you to easily control many parameters in Cubase in a very central and easily accessible location in the user interface. And they get even more fun when you combine them with the hardware control service. So let's go. So let's dive directly into Cubase for this. So you can see that I have an empty project over here with just one audio track. And to show the quick controls, we first need to enable them if they are not already enabled. And you can do that over here on the left side in the inspector. There's a section quick controls over here, which has now been added and you can then expand it. And it shows you eight slots in which you can add eight quick controls to control various parameters on this track. For example, if you click in the first slot, you get an expandable list of all the parameters that you can control. And maybe you always want to use the first control for gain staging your track. So you can link it to pre-gain, for example. The next one could be that you may always want to add a low cut filter on your track. So you can add a quick control linked to low cut filter on. So if you now open the channel settings on this track, you can see that if I vary the pre-gain over here, you can see that it also changes in the channel settings. And if I enable the low pass filter, you can see that it also gets enabled in the channel settings. So these parameters are now accessible directly from your project view without opening the channel settings. Now they are also available in the mixer view. Then over here in the racks, you can add the track quick control section. And then you can see over here that you can also control the pre-gain from here and enable or disable the low cut filter on this channel. You can also add another quick control from the mixer view itself by clicking in the third slot. And maybe it also makes sense to add the low cut frequency so that you can also determine where to do the low cut. Now if we go back to the project view, and if we, for example, add an insert plugin on this track, and let's make it a delay, a delay stereo, for example, and we go back to the quick control section, and we can now also add a quick control for any parameter on this plugin. Inserts, number one, H delay stereo, delay in beats per minute. And as you can see, the quick control is now linked to this knob in the plugin. Now it's also possible to learn a quick control. You can push the learn button over here, then push the slot that you want to learn, then move the button of the plugin, then turn off the learn function. And you can see that now the feedback is also linked to a quick control. Now you can also get rid of a quick control by selecting it and choosing no parameter or selecting it and pushing backspace and enter. Basically the same way that you can use to get rid of an insert effect. And you can also get rid of all quick control assignments by pushing this button, which deletes all of them. Now the quick controls that you add are specific for this track. So for example, if I add a quick control to volume and I add another audio track, you can see that the quick control does not exist on the second audio track, but only on the first audio track. If we duplicate a track, then the quick control gets duplicated as well. So that's a way to get the same quick controls that you've set up already. Now another way to get the same quick controls is by saving them as a preset. For example, we can say over here that I want to save this quick control set as a preset and I can call it volume only. If I then go to this audio track without quick controls, you can see over here that I have a volume only preset now, which copies the quick control that I set up on this track as well. Now there's another good reason to save these quick control presets and that's because any quick control that you set up only has project scope. So if you want to use the same quick controls in another project, you kind of have to save them as a preset. You can also get rid of those presets again over here, remove preset and the volume only preset is gone. You can see that Steinberg has also added a couple of presets which they thought were useful. This is for example, a preset which includes volume control, pan, low cut filter control, high cut filter control and the first two cents, but they also have presets in which you can control EQ bands one and two and EQ bands two and three, for example. Now the most interesting parts are still to come, so hang in there. But by now, if you like this video or find it useful, please give it a big thumbs up on YouTube. It really helps. Subscribe to the channel and ring the little bell icon so you know when I post another video. I also have many affiliate links in the description to these stores. So if you intend to buy anything, Click one of those affiliate links, have a look in those stores, and I'll get a small commission on your purchase without any additional cost to you. As always, highly appreciate it. So let's get back to the quick controls. Now, so far I showed you quick controls on an audio track, but quick controls are actually available on all of these track types in Cubase. And the parameters that are available to use as quick controls are obviously determined by whatever can be controlled on those track types. And a very nice one in that are instrument tracks. For example, if I now add a retroloc 
instrument track to this project, you can see that the quick controls are already filled out because Retrolog already comes with some default quick controls. And you can also see them when you click the QC button over here on the virtual instruments, which is meant to show height the VST quick controls. And the first one is, for example, linked to the cutoff frequency of the filter, which works great. And the second one is the filter resonance. And the third one is the filter distortion. So you can see the track quick control move as well as the VST quick control. And I'm saying it like that because they are actually not exactly the same thing. Because you can also set up different quick controls in the track versus the quick controls in the VST instruments. For example, I could completely remove the track quick controls and the VST quick controls remain, as you can see. I can also add the distortion to quick control one, for example, whereas it is quick control three in the VST instrument. And I can also restore all quick controls to the way they are on the VST instrument by using this button, get default quick controls from plugin, and now they are the same again. Now I can also learn quick controls in the VST instrument by pushing the learn button over here, then selecting the quick control that I want to change, for example, this one, and then touching the control on the VST instrument, which is now the master tuning then disable the learn mode. And as you can see, the quick control on the track is still the decay of the ADSR curve, but the quick control on the VST instrument is actually the tuning. And we can of course sync that again by using this. And now the quick control on the track is also the master tune. Just some things to watch out for when you're setting this up. So you have to remember that the quick controls in the VST plugin and the quick controls on the track are not necessarily the same. I would say try to keep them the same because it gets confusing otherwise. But if you want to make them different, it's possible. Now, another very nice feature is that you can actually link these quick controls to any MIDI controllers that you want on hardware control services. Let's have a look at that. Now, in order to show how these quick controls can be set by linked hardware, I set up a MIDI remote in Cubase for my Native Instruments Complete Control Keyboard. Now, we'll take a short look at that, but I have to say that MIDI remotes are quite a big separate subject in Cubase. So if you want to see another video on that, let me know in the comments. But let's have a look, because if I open my lower zone here, you can see that I've set up a MIDI remote controller, which has eight rotary buttons, and they've all been linked to the focus quick control in Cubase. And basically that means that whatever is in focus, whatever I have selected in Cubase, will get controlled by these knobs on my keyboard. Let me just show you that. So if I now open Retrolog again, you can see that the first rotary button on my controller now controls the filter cutoff. And the third one controls the filter distortion, for example. If I then select the audio track, however, now the first button controls the volume. And the second one controls pan left, right. Yeah, so as you can see, these quick controls can be very convenient and very useful, and they prevent you from having to dive down two or three layers into Cubase to get to a certain parameter. And they get even more fun when you combine them with a hardware control service and the Cubase MIDI remote functionality. But maybe you've been using quick controls for a long time for very interesting tasks in Cubase already. So in that case, let me know, or also let me know if this is new to you and you think it could be useful. Now, if you really like these deep dives into Cubase, then you're probably also going to enjoy this video about the Cubase core track. Have a look, enjoy, and see you soon.